Today I'm working on this 2021 Tesla Model 3 and like a bunch of other Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys, it started to stink. And so there's a ton of other videos out there that just say to replace the cabin air filter and to use some evaporator cleaner spray um, and that makes the smell go away. And it does. It works for maybe three, four months and then the smell comes back. And so I've never had any other vehicle have this problem before and so today I wanted to figure out why it's happening on the Tesla and see if I can come up with a way to make it not come back in the future. So let's get started. Blah, blah, blah. Now I go into quite a bit of detail about the design flaw that I discovered and a few different ways that I can fix it. If you just want to jump ahead to some solutions that you can try to resolve this, then you can skip ahead to these timestamps. Otherwise, keep watching for all the details. So if we open the hood, we can see right away that this is the intake for the cabin air. Now my theory is that water is actually getting in here from the windshield area right under the hood and getting sucked into this intake. So let's see if we can prove that. So I went over to Harbor Freight and I got one of these moisture meters. Now this is meant to measure the moisture of wood, but we're gonna use this and we're going to measure the moisture of the filter and then wash the windshield, measure it again, see if we're actually getting water in the filter or not. And we're just following Tesla's own video on how to replace this. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take out this screw, pull off this plastic cover, pull out the first one and then the second one. And now we can go ahead and test the moisture content of these. So this is the bottom one. I'm expecting there to be some moisture down here. We're looking at 9%, 9%, 9%. So roughly around 10% moisture. So now what we're gonna do is put these back in and we're going to wash the windshield and see if it changes. All right, so now that the windshield is washed, I'm going to pop these filters back out. Again, we're gonna check moisture. 14, 12, 11, 12, 10. So it doesn't look like these are all that wet right now. And so now what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna turn the fan, the intake on full, and we're gonna try again. So I just washed the windshield again, but this time with the fan sucking in from the outside on high. And now we're going to check to see if there's moisture in these filters. Look at all of this moisture. This is all just straight water that's on the inside of our filter now. This filter is now just soaked. I can test this here. This is measuring OL, meaning overload. It's the most moist that this thing can be. This one's 60%. This is the cause of our problem. Now, after washing the car, you can see just how much water is able to get in between here and the top of the hood. Now, Tesla never claimed to try to keep this spot dry. There's no gaskets around the outside here. The only spot where there's a gasket is in this little cargo area here. So there's nothing, there's no water inside of here. Well, there's a little bit, but most of the water is meant to stay up here. So water is meant to be able to get here. And this is where our air is sucking in. So let's pull off this cover and see what's under here. Pop off this cover here. This just pulls off. And there's one little electrical connector in here that needs to pull off. And then there's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. This top cover here can just pull off. And inside here, there's one more. Now this whole thing can just pop off now. Now if we look down here, we can see that there's this one little duct here and there's a lot of water that got sucked down into there. So I'm just gonna pull this off. Down inside of here, this can just kinda come apart like this and this whole thing is now out you can see there's just these little plastic tabs that just kind of wear out and then down inside of here they just push over these little threaded studs here and here now you can see on the bottom here there is a small drain hole but if it's got a drain hole then how is water getting in let's see if we can take a look at what's happening inside of this when air is getting sucked in 
So I've put some Velcro on top of this GoPro, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it down inside of here so we can actually see the water that's coming into the duct here. So this isn't gonna be a perfect setup because the camera and the flashlight are actually gonna kinda of get in the way of the water, but we're gonna get a rough idea of what's going on in there. And we're gonna try one more time with a bunch of water. So you can see when the fan is on full blast, really, really pulling in a lot of air, there's so much negative pressure inside of this duct that it's actually sucking up from the drain hole rather than letting water go down. So it's sucking through here, making the water bubble up and get straight inside the fan where it can get blown onto the cabin air filter. So I came out here to the junkyard so we could see if we could find a whole bunch of different cars that are already mostly apart so we can see what their cabin intake setup looks like and how they're avoiding getting water inside the cabin. Now in this car you can see there's this plastic trim on top with a very coarse pre-filter and the water would just collect in this channel here and drain down to the wheel wells. This is a 2007 Acura RDX and you can actually see down right inside where most cars have their cabin air filter. Here's a 2012 GMC Acadia. Here's a 2005 Chevy Silverado. This is a 2006 Chevy Cobalt. This is a 2003 Honda Accord. Here's a 2012 Kia Sedona. Here's a 2007 Hyundai Sonata. This is a 2010 Volkswagen Jetta. This is a 2010 Dodge Journey. So with every single one of these cars that we looked at, it seems like they're pulling in cabin air directly off the firewall covered by a bunch of different layers of trim and plastic, trying to keep water out of that intake. So I'm not sure why Tesla wanted to do this differently. Now Tesla is somewhat unique in that the air that's in the cabin, even when you're in the recirculate mode, it's still going through that filter. Most of these other cars, they're filtering when the air comes into the car, but then never again. But I don't see why this makes a difference of where they're sucking the air from. If you just suck off the firewall, like all of these other cars, you wouldn't have this problem. If the filter is wet, anything that's caught in the filter, like leaves and sticks and seeds and bugs, all of that stuff, instead of being nice and dry, it's gonna be wet, and then it's gonna start to rot. And that's what you're smelling. You're smelling wet compost, maybe some mold, some mildew, because all of these little microorganisms need water to survive. Now there are a ton of other posts online that say you have to buy this special cleaner that you spray on the evaporator up in here because that's where the odor comes from. But I can smell the funk on this filter when it's wet. And if I replace just this filter without using the spray, the smell goes away. So I'm pretty confident that the evaporator is not the source of our smell and that it's entirely coming from the wet filter. Another theory that people have posted online is that the cabin filter is actually pressed up against the evaporator and the water from the evaporator is transferring onto the cabin filter, getting the cabin filter wet. So let's take a look. So as you can see, it looks like there's at least a quarter of an inch between the evaporator and the cabin air filter. I don't see how water could jump across that gap, especially because air is flowing from the filter to the evaporator. It's going the other way. Now Tesla did release an update years ago to run the fan for a bit after the car is parked to dry up any moisture that might be in the evaporator or the filters. Now while I do think that this is smart to dry up any water that might drip down at the bottom here, I don't think that it addresses the root issue of water getting in from the intake like I've shown in this video. And so there's a bunch of different things that you can do to prevent this from smelling in the future. One of the first things is that I don't know why this duct needs to be in there. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal to just remove this entirely and let it suck directly off the firewall instead. With the duct removed, air will still be able to get sucked through this vent, but any water that gets through the vent will just drain straight down where the duct was trying to drain it to in the first place. Next, anytime that you wash the car, you need to make sure that you put it in car wash mode, even if you're not in a car wash on a hot day with cabin overheat protection enabled, this fan can spin up to suck in a whole lot of outside air. If you're washing the car, you need to make sure that that vent is closed so that no water can get inside and into the cabin. And so I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna turn on car wash mode and we're gonna see what happens. So I'm in the service menu and I'm gonna say car wash mode. 
That door is now closed, so no water will be sucking in from out there. And also, if somebody else washes or details your car, make sure that they know about car wash mode too. But unfortunately, this isn't the only time that the car gets wet. If the wipers are moving really quickly, I suspect that we can get some water in this same vent hole. Now, ideally what should happen, water should come down into this channel here, walk all the way down here, and then inside of here would just drain down into the wheel well. So I've set up a camera down inside of here and put the cover back on. And now I'm going to take some water and I'm going to get it on the windshield. And I want to see if the wipers are actually getting water down inside of there or not. Now if we open the hood, we can see that water is definitely getting sprayed into this area from the wipers. Now if you work for Tesla or you know somebody that works for Tesla, I think that we can fix this problem with software. Now the car can detect if it's raining, it's the same algorithm they use to use automatic wipers. If the car detects that it's raining, they really need to limit how fast this fan can run. If the fan speed is limited, then water will find its way down this drain hole like it's supposed to. I think another improvement could be made in the wipers themselves. In high speed, rather than coming down and flinging the water, it can go up quick, but if it comes down slowly so it doesn't fling the water, I think that would be a big improvement. Next, there are a couple aftermarket solutions that I wanted to talk about. One of them is this little gasket kit, and it's meant to just line the top of the hood. And once it's installed, it should actually create a barrier here which will prevent water from getting down into this intake. So I'm going to show you how to install this quick. So the stock gaskets on Tesla, they stop here for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. So there's one on one side, one on the other. With the hood closed, if I come down here and look down inside here, there's quite a bit of a gap. So there's a lot of room for water and moisture and stuff to get down inside of there. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove these original uh, gaskets here. I'm just got my little plastic pry tool. I'm just going to get that behind here. I'm just going to pop it off here and here. And this pops out. And it's the same on the other side. And then I've just got a rag. I'm going to make sure everything's all clean and dry. Next, I've just got these little self-adhesive tabs. I'm just going to peel off the coating here. And I'm just going to line these up in the holes. Nice and centered. I'm going to push it on. And I'm going to do the same for the middle one here. And finally, the driver's side. And then I can take this rubber gasket and I can just start it from one side. Now I've got it pushed all the way in. I can just get an idea of where I want to cut it. Cut the gasket with just a regular pair of scissors and we're all done. So now I'm going to close the hood and I'm going to take a look at what gap is left now. So you can see that gasket is pretty much sealed up any gap there. So we're gonna have a lot less water getting inside to where that cabin air intake is. And now I'm gonna do my best to get water down inside of there and we can see a before and after. After that flood of water, I'm gonna open the hood. And we can see that it's actually mostly dry in here. We can see where our gasket's been touching along here. Got a little bit that might've seeped under here. This looks actually mostly dry. And so I think the gasket's actually quite a nice addition to try to keep water out of here. So after looking at the footage, it seemed like we were able to reduce a lot of the water getting in here. But it seemed like there was a lot of water that was still getting in back here. Now I tried messing around with some weather stripping here, but even without the weather stripping, like straight from the factory, this apron doesn't clip in and so I couldn't get a tight seal. Now if you left the duct installed, that means that water would be entering here, which wouldn't actually matter because it's not going to get sucked into the cabin. So I don't think it's necessary to do the weather stripping. You can either remove this duct and not install the gasket, or you can install the gasket and not remove this duct. You can do both if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. So it's been a couple days and I've let these filters dry out. I want to see how much moisture content is on them so we can do a before and after. Looks like this one's 8%, 9%, 11%.
So I've got the wipers going, I've got the aftermarket gasket installed. Now I'm going to flood the windshield with as much water as I can, and we're gonna see how much of it gets down inside of there. This one's 14, 14, nine, zero. These filters are dry. I don't have any concerns about these causing an odor in the future. We have solved this problem. Now this is a 2023 Model Y, and you can see it has the bioweapons defense mode, which basically means it's got a really big HEPA filter under here before the air even goes into the cabin. Once it's in the cabin, there is another filter inside that will refilter the air even in recirculate mode. If you have the HEPA filter, then the intake to the cabin is entirely different, and I don't think you're going to have a water issue. Now they introduced this to the Model Y sometime in 2021. So 2020 Model Ys and early 2021 Model Ys do not have biodefense mode. And I suspect that any car with this style cabin air intake will have a drainage issue. Now Tesla claims there's no room for a HEPA filter in a Model 3, but I think if people are willing to give up their cargo space, we could see an aftermarket one in the future. And last but not least, I wanted to talk about the brand of the cabin air filter that you use. As far as I know, Wix is the only brand that has a partnership with Microban. Microban is supposed to kill anything that's growing on the filter. Now, I don't know how effective this is going to be against things that are like in the filter, like grass or whatever, because that's not the filter itself. But if you really want to go all out, uh, I think it's worth taking a chance on this Wix filter with the Microban. Now I wanted to point out there's a Wix filter and there's a Wix XP filter. The XP filter is supposed to be a premium filter, it costs a little bit extra, and this has activated charcoal in it which is supposed to help remove odors. But I noticed when I got this that it didn't have any indication on it that it's treated with microban. So I called Wix, I talked to them about it, they did say the only the non-XP version is treated with microban. The XP version is supposed to have a little bit better odor reduction, but in my opinion, I'd rather have the microban. And so if you're interested in getting a filter with microban, then this is the one you want. So there you have it. Finally, we have a way to keep these filters dry. As I said, I think Tesla can fix this with software. So before you start tearing anything apart, be sure to just Google this and see if maybe they've rolled out an update to address this issue, in which case you don't have to do anything at all. If you don't want to do any modifications, then you can always keep the fan speed low or turn on recirculate mode whenever it's raining. Another option is to message Tesla directly through the app and let them know about this problem. If enough of us message them, then maybe they'll expedite a software change and finally put this problem to rest. I will put links in the description to where you can buy the gasket and the aftermarket filters that I used. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments, and I hope you found this helpful.